Hi, so this is my video on uh, mechanisms. So um, as one of the things you have to identify when you look at mechanisms is the transmission of motion. You have to look, is the, um, are the components that are in the machine transmitting the same type of motion or are they transforming the motion? So if we take a minute and look at those gears, as you can see, the first one is a rotation. Let's say this middle one is the intermediate gear, also rotation. And the last one, rotation as well. So because the rotation remains all throughout the system, we will call this a transmission of motion. Because all really that's happening is that rotation is going from one to the next, and there is no change in the motion. On the contrary, if we look at this cam follower, one of my favorite uh, systems, uh, if you notice the first one is definitely rotating and the, the second piece, the follower, is doing the translation, exactly. So now I noticed how my motion went from a rotation to a translation as opposed to transmission systems where it's just rotations throughout a transformation system, you can see the motion transforming, changing from one type to the next. Now, once you have determined if you have a transmission or a transformation system, we have to look at the reversibility of the system. So when I mean by reversible, as you can see here, if the driver component can become the driven and the driven can become the driver. When I say reversibility, I don't mean um, I can turn um, clockwise or counterclockwise or upside down, right side up, things like that. No, it's really more a roll reversibility. In other words, remember that I was saying, let's say I am the driver and my husband is a passenger. Well, it is possible that our roles change. He can become the driver and I can become the driven or the passenger. Okay? Uh, the driver is always the one in charge of the movement and the driven will follow along. Okay? Without the driver, the motion wouldn't be possible. Um, over here, as you can see, if I tell you that this first component um, is a driver, so let's say it has a handle or it's a, it has a motor that turns on the entire system, you'll know that um, because this is the driver, the last gear at the end of the system is the driven gear. Got it? Anything that happens in between, um, we don't take it into account. So then we call it intermediate gear. Really, it's just there to transmit the rotation. All right, so now, again, we look at this one. In this situation, um, the cam is the driver and the follower is just as it says, follows the cam. It cannot do the opposite. Um, the cam is generally connected to some kind of handle or a motor and spins. You see that inside um, cars at the top of the piston. And so doing this allows to uh, move the follower in the translation mode. But the trend, the follower cannot do the opposite. They can't push the cam to go in a circular motion. So really it's just sitting there and just whoop, takes whatever moves it, comes at it. So in this case situation, we'll say that um, the system is not reversible. And I'll give you a few minutes to take a look at this. Um, we have the motion transmission systems. We have five of them. And pay, pay attention on the top here. They all rotations turn to rotation as well, or they transmit. So if we take a look, we have the friction gears and we have the two rotational arrows in opposite directions. Pulley and belt, same direction, thanks to the belt. Gear assembly, opposite direction, sprocket, wheels, and chain. So a bit like your bicycle. Oops. And last but not least, wheel and worm gear. So a little trick here to remember, 
Um, this here, this, this is the part, the worm gear that looks like a worm because they call it this because the shape is cylindrical like a worm. And please notice and highlight that this is the only system that is not reversible. And this is my trick for you is to remember, um, it is easier to memorize what is non-reversible or irreversible versus the ones that are, that are reversible. Just memorize one, knowing that one is not reversible and all the others are. So question is, can, uh, can the worm gear become the driven? Well, the answer is no, because this gear on the top gets jammed if it will try and turn the, uh, the screw. Alrighty, so now we're on to transformation systems. Um, as you can see here, um, there is going to be a change in the motion. So the difference is that we go from rotation to translation or vice versa. So as you can see here, we have this screw gear system that will turn and we have a helical motion of the screw, the bolt, sorry. And uh, the example for that one is the glue stick uh, because inside a glue stick, you actually, if you can see this, you can actually, well, you turn it, you have the screw inside. So that's the rotational movement that you see there. And then inside there's a screw that will uh, push the glue to the top. Right? So the reason being non-reversible, notice how the bottom part is where I turn, that's my driver. And I cannot make the top part the driver. Like, you see how I'm trying to push the glue? It's not possible for me to push it down in order for the bottom part to rotate. Okay? So this is what we mean by reversibility. The rolls cannot be interchanged. And it is done so every time that you push on the glue and use it, it doesn't get uh, back into the tub. That would be really annoying every time you want to use a glue. Um, the cam follower we've seen multiple times, as you can see, rotates and the top part, the follower, like the word says, it follows the movement of the cam. And it is not reversible. Um, the cam follower cannot push the, the circle to do the cam to do a full circle. The other two are um, uh, reversible. As you can see, we have the crank, like in a motor, and the connecting rod, which I should have placed. Like it's this piece right here, this whole piece. Okay. And so um, as this one turns, it will cause the connecting rod to go in a forward and back motion, translation. And then we have the rack and pinion. Again, the rack will go right and left, so translation, and the pinion in a circular motion, rotation. All right, so let's play a little game here, a little activity. Can you tell me first if these are transmission or transformation motions? So I'll take a minute, look at them, think about it, and let me know. So first one, transmission or transformation? Transformation. And the second one. Transmission. And the last one. Transformation. Notice here, this one on the left, this rotation, causes a translation. This is how you know. You look at the movements, then you determine. Over here, rotation, 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 rotation. This is all rotation throughout. This is therefore a transmission. All right, and the same thing here, rotation, causes a translation. So you know you have the crank right here. And this would be the connecting rod. This would be a four cylinder car. <laughs> so you have the rotation and the translation, therefore it's a transformation. All right, next one. First one, what do we have? Rotation, 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 and transmission. 
What about here? Transmission. Just imagine that it's connected to another gear at the end. And these two. Didn't find a gift for that one. All right, let's proceed with uh, these uh, three more mechanisms. So notice here we have that gear with the worm gear. Generally, the gear is the driver and the worm gear is the driven. And if we did the opposite, trying to make this one the driver and make it turn, it would cause the gear at the bottom to jam. So that is a transmission. What's the next one? Transmission again, you got it. And the last one. Transformation. Good job. Now, next activity. Can you name these various mechanisms? So what is the first one called? Chain and sprocket, you got it. And the next one. Cam follower. Alrighty, let's continue. Can you name these mechanisms? First one. Rack and pinion. Next. Gears. And the last one. Connecting rod and crank. So the connecting rod, all of that, and the crank. In this situation, it's um, a car, right? It's a four-cylinder car. And we have the um, cranks are all attached on what we call a crank shaft. So this entire pole here is actually called a shaft, crank shaft. And to end off with this little part on the transmission and transformation systems. Your car in general, cars in general, are amazing um, at the complexity of systems combined together. And this is only just a simplified version. Um, there is way more to it. Um, so just right there in this image, can you tell, can you recognize any of the mechanisms? So we have one over here and one here. So yes, the first one is definitely a cam follower. And this one here is your crank and connecting rod. So these two together play a key element in the, co the combustion of the car and therefore the, the energy needed to advance the car. So if you notice here, this valve will let some um, mixture of gas and oxygen get in. As soon as the gas oxygen mix gets in, a little spark is produced and it burns. That's where the combustion comes in. There it happens again, right here. This forces the piston to go down. Exhaust is produced, this is the brown part, and the valve will open to get the exhaust out. Wait for it, there it is. So gas in, combustion, and exhaust out. And thanks to the valves opening because of the cam followers. Thanks to that, we're able to constantly, it's a constant cycle, right? And this happens extremely fast, of course. Um, but now you understand why, let's say I go a four cylinder car compared to a eight cylinder car. The eight cylinder car now, as you see, com will use up way more gasoline than the four cylinder car, double, double the amount. This is why now the gas price is being so expensive. Um, an eight cylinder car um, will eat up a lot of gas. That's it for my lesson on transmission and transformation systems. Uh, you can watch some more videos on my YouTube channel, including uh, the next one on speed changes. See you soon.